I think about you all through the day, my buddy. Ooh, ooh. My buddy. <laughs> the following quotes were said about my next guest. Quote, he is the Maury Wills of the drums. Quote, his artistry is almost beyond belief, and he plays faster with one hand than most drummers play with two. Here's the drum wonder himself, <laughs> Buddy Rich. <laughs> He is in a very continental mood today. Damn right. <laughs> Buddy, let me show you something. Let me. Oh, don't start that jazz with me. You look like Groucho Marx back there. <laughs> do those flattering things, do they have, the people say, do they have an effect on the way you play? I'll tell you, I'm so tired of being a sex symbol, man, that it's, uh, you know, I just put it down. Do you believe all those things that people what? say about yourself, about the way you play? Do I believe what they say about yeah, me? Yeah, the quotes that I read. Everything that you said is absolutely, perfectly accurate. How, and buddy, true. What do you owe it all to, buddy? Clean living? God, no. <laughs> Why are you... I mean, is that... Now, tell the truth. There's yeah. so much that you can be taught as far as doing this is concerned. Doing but what? Playing the drums. Oh, I thought just doing that. But a lot of natural... You, you have to be born with a lot of that natural ability. Well, let me tell you what I don't do. I don't rehearse one tune and sing another. <laughs> you, he's, remember the day he saw that show? He's never going to let me forget that. I'm never going to let you do that. But that was a metal block. Right. Don't you ever get metal blocks? Never. Come I'm on. so straight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you travel all over the world. I've been you? all over the world. I've been to Camden. <laughs> <laughs> now, where have you been recently? Come on, tell the truth. Recently, I uh, just left the holiday. And... Uh, <laughs> We just did a, an eight-week tour. We had the greatest tour. We were over in uh, Spain, Czechoslovakia, uh, Germany, Italy, all through uh, Stockholm, Copenhagen. Copenhagen. you got to get there. That's really something, isn't it? What books? <laughs> <laughs> 720 in the books. And more. Yeah. Right. Do, are they appreciative of your kind of music? Greatest audiences in country? the world. Greatest audi European audiences are really jazz oriented. They're fantastic. Is it mostly the young people or is it just everybody? No, I think it's just a uh, get together of all kinds of people. Young people, middle aged people, guys my age. Um, <laughs> really fantastic. <laughs> it's get Mike today. I can't get that work. That's it. That's yeah. it. You know, Barry Fitzgerald. I, I, I sure. know we've talked about it before, but I do. I want to touch upon this. This what? man was a dancer before he was a drummer. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm told a very good one. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, sure. Both feet. Well, how did the whole thing happen? Were your parents in show business? My, well, yeah. My father and mother were both in vaudeville. And uh, at the end of their act, they used to bring me out, the finale, and stand me up behind a set of drums. This is what I, I've heard, you know. And I used to play a thing called Stars and Stripes Forever. Isn't that adorable? It is. With a little sailor suit, you know. Oh, I'd love and, it. And really, I'd love to dig up a picture of you and that. Oh, outfit. I have pictures like that. Have you? Oh, God, yes. Why taken, you bring uh, them I've taken some recently. Now. Why don't you bring them the next time? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw you do something, and this, I hadn't even planned to mention this, but I saw you on Lucy's show. Oh, yeah. And you're a good actor. Oh, you sure. You were convincing. I mean, you, <laughs> you surprised me, buddy. I thought you might just, it, it'd ask you something, you might go... Or something like that, you know. The script didn't call for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm terribly talented. Yes, you are. Sure. What would you... Listen, if, yeah. you, if you weren't playing the drums for a living, what do you think you'd be doing? Heist the bank. <laughs> now, come on. Well, I wouldn't do anything that connected with labor. I wouldn't do anything hard, like Are work. you against work? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for the quickest way to make all the bread I possibly can <clears throat> and then split someplace, you know, and maybe go like find an island... Where would you go if you had all, all the money you needed? Where would you go? I really, really hadn't thought about that. You know but I'd probably go you'd, back to Brooklyn. You'd keep, <laughs> you'd keep right on playing those things. Yeah, but I, I, I play them only when I felt like it. You know, I, I don't feel like doing as many one-nighters as I've been doing in the past uh, 35, 40 years. You know, as a matter of fact, this year we're not going to do the same kind of work that we've been doing with the band. It's we're murder. Gonna, uh, it's take, uh, take a little more time off. Last, week, last year we worked almost 50, 50 weeks. 
That's this year much. we're going to work about 45. Mm -hmm. You know, I've already had, when we came back from Europe, we took three weeks off and I went home and um, I tried to get some sun and I went back to Los Angeles and that was during the cold wave, right? Mm -hmm. And now that I'm out here, they're having a heat wave out there, which is really <laughs> incredible. You know, I talked to my daughter yesterday, she was swimming at the house, you know, and you know what happened here, yeah. right? The snow and everything, freezing, it was really freezing, very right? cold. Are you, still, are you still on the karate kick? Oh, yes. Studying? Oh, yeah. Have you got your brown belt yet? Oh, I have my brown belt. I'm waiting for my black belt now. I should be getting my black belt this month. How um, often do you work at that? Uh, almost every day. Why did, you, why did you get interested in that, buddy? I, I thought it was a challenge when I first started it, and uh, it was something that uh, very young people usually start out doing that. And um, because I like the uh, physical aspect of life, I like to keep myself in shape because doing this kind of work is kind of difficult, you know, when you travel three, four hundred miles every night doing one-nighters, you have to stay in shape. But you have and, to take uh, a great deal of discipline, karate. Yeah, and I don't associate does. discipline with you, I don't know why. Well, it's the kind of discipline that I enjoyed uh, being involved in. You know, it's, uh, for instance, when I first started breaking boards, the whole idea, the whole concept of breaking boards was not so much the power and the strength that goes into it, but the mental stability that you must have in order to continue on and break through the boards. And uh, Does it help you at all in your playing? Oh, no, it's hindered me. No, I'm talking, it could very well with the things you do with your hands. You see, look at here. I don't know, last week I did the uh, Carson show and I broke some boards. And when I went to hit it, he, you're supposed to hold the boards very rigid when you hit into them, right? Mm -hmm. And just as I made the contact with the board, he flinched. And he relaxed his hold mm. on the board. Oh. And I had to hit into it. And uh, I thought I broke my thumb. Uh, oh. it's all well, is that a pinky yeah, or a thumb? That's discolored. Yeah. That's, that's the a pinky. finger. Yeah, that's the pinky, right. Mm -hmm. This is a hand, this is a pinky. <laughs> right. And... Uh, I went to the hospital last week, and they x-rayed my hands. And it's all right? Oh, uh, the hands all right. The bones have to go. <laughs> you didn't break anything? No, I didn't break anything. Oh, no, I was good. very fortunate because it was very swollen when we played, when we opened here. Now, d you said something about you have to feel like playing to play. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like playing now? Or? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be five minutes short. Play for us, will you, buddy? You want me to work and play? Yeah, please. Am, right. I gonna, am I going to play right with there. Mr. Harnell and his mother? Mr. Harnell! You mean a solo? Oh, well, wait till I shave. That's All right. Remember those bits? Buddy, you, you said that you, you don't like country music, so, and uh, you have some definite feelings about Absolutely. musical tastes. Absolutely. I think that it's about time that this country grew up in this musical taste. 
rather than making the giant step backwards that, that country music is doing. We try uh, very hard to do things like the, the moon landing and uh, our new cars and fashions and everything, all a step forward. And country music is a giant step backwards. It's so simple that anybody can sing it, anybody can do it, anybody can play it on one, uh, one string. Right on. But I think it's about time that uh, we learn that uh, there has to be a, a higher degree of musical intelligence and that we have to start listening to better things rather than the simple things. You know, our creators in jazz, uh, the only art form that this country really has produced, and people like Art Tatum and Lester Young and Charlie Parker, some of the great giants of jazz, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Benny Goodman, Count Basie, these people are giving something in music, they're giving of themselves, and yet they have Hall of Fame for uh, a baseball player or a trophy for a football player who gets smashed. And um, the line is forgotten about uh, the great jazz uh, musicians who have given I'm glad so much. you brought that up because not enough respect is given to Absolutely good musicians. Not. Absolutely people not. People kind of take it for granted. Consider them. People take it for granted and they're, uh, I, I think they should be respected because I know watching our guys, right. they're working every minute of every day. Well, they're creative. In bettering that's, themselves. That's what music is all about. It's, it's creativity, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you have to create too much, man, to, to be a hillbilly. I don't, you know, anybody can go and say, wham, wham, wham. Whoops! Whoops. <laughs> uh, listen, Buddy he's a, he's Rich a high school teacher. Buddy Rich, all the man. He's a high school teacher, right? That's right. And his brain should tell him that country music is really outside, man. It's really simple, you know. And uh, I think when you do a show like this, it's about time that the young people who may be viewing this thing realize that there's a lot more to music than just uh, playing one chord or two chords He's, and, and uh, going out and trying to make money. Music, dollars. music, music makes various people happy in different ways. There are some people who use mi music as a kind of a tranquilizer, kind of a, you know. Yeah, well, I, watch, more, I watch what's westerns. More tranquil, what's more, I, watch, more, I watch westerns because it doesn't really tax my brain. Yeah, because, because you know who's going to win. I can go up and get in, go in the kitchen for five minutes and come back and get right back in. And right, isn't that simple? Yes. Well, but, I'd rather but, but think I, you know I'd rather think that Mannix can't make it on Friday night or Saturday night. You know, I'd rather think. That he's being chased and can't win. It gives you something to think about. How's he going to get away? Or Mission Impossible. You know, although you know they're going to win, I don't know how they're going to win. And it gives me something to think about. Mm -hmm. And the same thing applies to music. You know, if I'm going to sit and listen to uh, you sing, and I'm going to listen to Frank and Tony Bennett, I know that there's enough emotion there to carry me through whatever period of emotion I'm going through. That's great company but, you uh, just put me in, pal. You Thank know, you. if I have to listen to Glenn Campbell, man, that's like the cowboy Wayne Newton as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> It's interesting that as the uh, budgets for schools uh, become more and more difficult, that they, they're dropping music from some of the curriculum. That's unfortunate. In the school. That, that hurts. That's and unfortunate. that's tragic. Very because unfortunate. The, that is the beginnings of a, of a, a familiarity with the language of music. Now, I'll tell you something very, very interesting, Mike, if we have time. We just played a couple of high schools for some young, very young people. We played in Glassboro and we played in Western Massachusetts, a high school in Western Massachusetts, where they have a jazz orchestra for young people. And we did a concert there a week ago Friday, and the average age was about 17. Nobody much older than 19 in the audience. And we have a couple of rock charts in the band that we played. And as soon as we started to play that, we lost them. As soon as we got into the jazz thing that the band is uh, hey, known for, you know, the kids were just hysterical. It was one of the great nights the band's ever had. And the same thing applied when we were in Europe. The whole attitude in Europe is the jazz thing. You know, they got some excellent jazz musicians. England has one of the greatest bands. The band that plays behind Tom Jones is, is one of the, the great bands end. of all time. That's you know? right. So that uh, there must be something said about the art form of jazz, you know, and we, we tend to uh, not relate to the jazz thing. We like to think that the uh, real American music is the cowboy sitting on top of the horse with one leg over the saddle, singing, uh, you know, show me a home uh, with a buffalo well, room and I'll show you a dirty house, you know. You know what, <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you say about a Chet Atkins who plays, uh, and you listen to him with the Boston Pops, or that kind of thing? You say, well, what I, what I try to do is listen to the Boston Pops and reject Chet Atkins. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, really. No, I think he's really? a virtuoso. Listen, I think Chet Atkins is a virtuoso. He's a virtuoso, if, unless you've heard guys like Charlie Christians. And when you've heard, heard Charlie, Charlie Christians, Christians, then you can't relate to, to Atkins. Well, you know, buddy, every, it's, a, it's like that other now cat. You, now, uh, you're getting into it? styles hold now. It. Hold it, I'm the guest. Uh, <laughs> when you hear Boots Randolph, right? Yes. And you hear him play that funny thing that he plays, you know, Yakety Sax, which was like on the top ten for uh, an hour and a half. How do you listen to him and with the same ears try to listen to Lester Young or listen to Charlie Parker? You cannot do it, man, because the variance in the musical taste and the articulation and the ability and the heart and the time that went into to be a master like Lester Young was and left a mark for people like Stan Getz to follow. 
These people should be thought about, not these cowboys, man. But many of us don't have the education, the music education You don't need, a, music, you don't need a musical that. education, man. You need some ears, and you need some time to think about what people are producing. You know, it's like going to see a, a skin flake and a story like Love Story. There's a great difference, but they're both on the market. Now it's a, a, up to you, with a man with taste, to be able to discern which picture is the most uh, valid, the one that you think can give you the most. Do me you a know? favor, buddy. Do, uh, some, do some of your you're music mad at for me us. Now, right? No, uh, I'm not. I want you to play it. I want you oh, to talk through your whole listen, number. Can we, you got a cowboy chart? <laughs> <laughs> I still like that. What is this?